The seaweed is always greener on somebody else's leg. You dream about going up there, but that is well, a big... Well, well, you're mighty chipper this morning. <laughs> How you doing, Daddy? Fine. Yeah, you should have seen Harley last night at the hospital with Ellen Michael. Not bother you? No, no, it's great. She's just, you know, she's so full of uh, strength and faith, and, you know, she's telling them to hang on and to keep fighting. It... Girl's got a lot of spunk. Girl? Woman. Mm. Don't look at me like that. Like what? Like I'm seven years old. Well, I gotta admit, you're looking years younger this morning. No, I was just wondering what you're gonna do. About what? About that woman? I don't know. Well, it seems to me you've got two choices. You can hold on to the past, cling to memories of Reva, or start living again. Take a chance on Harley. I told you I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. The nurse said you were exhibiting signs of catatonia. Yeah. Yeah, Mom, I faked it. Quite well, obviously. I just couldn't stay in that jail anymore. I had to get out of there, and Alan Michael needs me, and now I'm stuck in here. There's nothing I can do. Daddy, you'll help me, won't you? I should be with my husband right now. There is nothing any of us can do but wait it out and pray that he pulls through the surgery. Pulse is stable at 70, and the blood pressure is still holding at 120 over 80. We also need more light. Is that better? It's all right, yes, okay. Any progress? It's slow go. In two hours. Yeah, I know, but the uh, bullet caused more tissue damage than we had considered, so another two, three hours, I don't know, something like that. So it's Dr. St. John holding on. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. He's going to be very careful. One slip, the patient gets better last. Dear Alan Michael, whatever happens to me tonight... Yeah, that's a good one. I know I've hurt you. <laughs> right, that's an understatement. My main... Oh, my only regret is that I never had your child. You're a liar, Blake. You're a liar. I should have killed you when I had the chance. You backstabbing me. Yeah. I thought you might like to know Calamity Jane's in a private room. Are the cops there? They're around, but she's not talking. Not to anyone. Not yet, anyway. Private room. How convenient. Thank you, Roger. For what? For making our next move even easier. Hi, uh, come in, come in. You look like I feel. Oh. Yeah, I didn't realize babies uh, ate so much. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. Yeah, well, that's her job. Yeah. I'm sorry, do you want some coffee? I want some sleep. <laughs> I've had enough coffee to kill a moose. Mm. So how'd you get home from the hospital? Uh, Alexander brought us home. How's Alan Michael? Still in surgery. Yeah, what a mess. Yeah. I'm really worried about him. Yeah, he'll be okay. Alexander told me that Blake was the one that fired the shot. I know, I was there. You were there? Yeah, I was on Swanson's tail. And he was seen going into Piedmont Park. By the time I arrived, the kid was already hit. Someone fled the scene, but I had to stay with the victim. Well, do you think it was Gary that was running away? I don't think I know. You have to find him. I've looked everywhere. I mean, there's nothing. Well, but... You can't, we can't just let him run around loose. He's dangerous. 
Well, think hard. I mean, where could he go? Now, have, have you talked to India? I haven't been able to find her. Figures. <laughs> well, as far as I know, Blakett was his only friend. You know, with friends like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what do we do now? I wish I knew. I mean, I'm out of commission. I mean, no badge means no manpower, no resources. I don't even know what I'm still doing here. I think you do. Yeah, I do. We're depending on you, Philip, Alan Michael, me. It's funny how things work out, huh? <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. All right. You tell Ross that Swanson's the key to this whole crazy puzzle. Okay, fine. What else? Well, I, I can't just sit here. Let me, let me do some legwork for you or something. What, in between feedings? Well, I'll st can strap the baby on my back like an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> well, forget All it. Right. I think she might blow your cover. But I do need someone, though. Excuse me. <clears throat> Delivery! Bye. Be a little god baby of mine before I went to the office. <laughs> Thank you for staying with the last night. No problem. You want, can you sit down for a second? Um, I got rounds in five minutes. Yeah. Daddy, what's taking so long? You've been in surgery for hours. I know, I know. It's a very delicate procedure. It could take all day. All day? Yeah. Hey, why don't you go get something to eat? Oh, no, no, no. I've stuck it out this long. I tell you what, I'm going to go get some coffee. Okay. Coffee? Mm, no. No, sure. Uh, check on Ross and Alexander. They're in ICU. They might want some. It's a good idea. See you in a few minutes. Okay. I'm just glad it's Daniel in there with Alan Michael. Yeah, well, thanks. Good. Harley, how about some juice? A roll? I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine. Since when do you turn down free food? It's my whole world come down around me. How oh, what else could go wrong? Hey, Alan Michael's tough. You said so yourself. I'll pull through. I hope so. It's Josh, isn't it? What? You're upset about Josh? No! Gotcha. Stop it. Hey, it is Josh, isn't it? You ever talked to him? Not exactly. You never told him how you felt? No, not in those words. Well, go to it, Harley. What are you waiting for? Tell him, please. Look, if you care about somebody, you tell him. You don't wait around. Because you never know what can happen. You are right about that. Well, go on, get out of here. I can't. I can't, I can't leave without Mike on surgery. Hey, you're not helping anyone standing around here. The only one you can help right now is yourself. Maybe Josh. I don't know, Daddy. What if she doesn't want me? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Too old for it. Oh, and you're too rich, and you're too handsome. Poor Harley. Josh, you can't decide these things for her. Well, you, you know the gal cares about you. You think so? Yep. Josh, life is too short. That's very true. You gotta go on living. You gotta start living for real. You know something? I think you're right. Mm. I want to do something for her. I want to... I want to give her something. Just give her yourself. Yeah. That'll be enough. You know, though, I think I, I think I should take her somewhere. I think once Ellen Michael is feeling better, we should... we should... we should go somewhere, like... someplace away from here, away from the kids. Just her and me. Nah, you're cooking. Someplace that's... that's far away. A nice, uh, balmy, tropical island? I don't think so. Some place like that, though, you know, some place with no tourists where we can be alone. Some place in the mountains, maybe, with some snow. 
Ah, and a fireplace. Perfect, son. Yeah, not... You're good at this. Not Cross Creek, though. No. I don't think I'm ready for that. What, what, what was the name of that place we used to go to in Canada skiing, remember? Mm. With Billy and, 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 and Trish? Morgan's in Banff. Banff? Mm-hmm. It's in the Rocky Mountains. It's gorgeous there. You think she'll go? Holly Cooper? No, I mean, do you think she'll go with me? I'd bet money on it. No, I mean, maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm moving too fast. Maybe I should just take it easy. Maybe I should surprise her. You know, act like I'm sending her away on a vacation and then meet her there. What do you think? Nice touch. Very romantic. <laughs> Have you all seen Wanda? Billy, what the devil are you doing here? Well, I work here. Well, you're supposed to be in Salt Lake City. What? Yeah, yeah. That's right, you are. To close that mining contract. Oh, gosh, did he? I, uh, hey, I plumb forgot. I'm, I'm sorry. You forgot? Yeah, well, uh, look, there's a lot going on with, with Vanessa and little Billy. and uh, I mean, it's just not a good time for me to be out of town right now. Where, where'd you say Wanda was? I didn't say it, Billy. Now, don't change the subject. We can't afford to botch this. A Lewis has got to be there. All right, Daddy. I'll call him up and I'll make an excuse and we'll uh, make some other arrangements. That's not the way I do business, Billy. Josh, do you know where I want to keep that herbal tea that she's always making for me? You've got to be hooked on that stuff, Billy. This is the third Excuse time me. this week. Billy! Look, Daddy, I already explained to you that Josh is the one who should be going to Salt Lake City. But you're the one who agreed to go. Yeah, well, now, look, I'm not comfortable going. Mining is Josh's area. Josh is the one who should Billy, go. I can't go, all right? Why not? Because I have work to do. Oh, yeah? Well, well what work do you have it's to do? It's none of your business. I just... Oh, I happen to be very time. busy here. Yeah, well, I can't go. Oh, hey, hell! Supposed... I'll get a plane ticket and go to Salt Lake City myself. Get out of here. Do something. Alan Michael needs me. Honey, they're not going to let you into the operating room. <sighs> Why is this taking so long? It's, it's delicate surgery. You want to help Alan Michael? <sighs> yes. Then tell the police what happened. Dad. I can't. You don't understand. Alan Michael could wind up dead. You don't understand. He could wind up dead anyway. Don't say that. Honey, listen to your father. Tell them what they need to know. I know you think you're being clever, but you're not. The police are going to find out one way or the other. Well, why are the police involved? It was an accident. Somebody else was there. This is not news to anyone. Identify him. Let the police take care of it. You take care of How it. How can I when you won't tell me who it is? I got you the best lawyer money can buy. Who? Clarence Bailey. He agreed? I thought he was a Spalding lawyer. He works for the Thorpes now. The point is, he can help you, but you've got to tell him the truth. Oh, you're not listening to me. I'm not afraid for myself. I don't care about myself. It's Alan Michael. I'm worried for Alan Michael. Oh, honey, I'm so sick of this. When is this going to end? What, what if Alan Michael survives? And I pray that he does. What are you going to do? Look him in the eye and lie to him about almost killing him? At least he'll be alive. No, no more lies. There have been enough lies in this family. You say you love Alan, Michael? I do. I wonder if you know what that means. If you love him, if you really love him, you're going to tell the truth and you're going to tell it now. Ah, uh, Dad, I can't. You should understand, of all people. No, not this time, Chrissy. You want to be Daddy's little girl. You want me to make it all better, but you're not willing to tell me the truth. No deal. You can lie to Alan, Michael. You can lie to yourself. But you're not going to lie to me. You're on your own this time. Wait, Daddy. Daddy! I feed out the stone Frankfurt and all... With gas X. Well, come in. I uh, didn't realize you had company. I'm out of here. Not on my account. Ah, uh, excuse me. Duty call. Oh, I'll, I'll do it. No, Mindy, I don't think you can. Uh, don't give up. Well, like I said, I'm out of here. Oh, wait a minute. I think you owe me an apology. Oh, yeah? For what? You were out of line last night calling me a mistress. Look, 
I call things the way I see them. You know, I thought I knew you. I mean, everyone else could, could write you up as another ditzy blonde, but no, not me. I saw the real Mindy Lewis. I thought I caught a glimpse of something no one else had. Like what? I don't know. Call me sentimental. It's your heart, your soul. I thought you were a real stand-up girl. I was wrong. Gee, thanks. You know, I figured the, the reason you fell in with Thorpe was because everyone else had turned their back on you. But last night it hit me. You're with him because you want to be. You got it. I mean, why would you want to be with a creep like that? He's not a creep. Not only a creep, a married creep. Well, he's not going to be married for long. Oh, yeah? Then what? You're going to be Mrs. Creep? That's fine. You made your bed, Melinda. Now you can lie in it. Blake, me. I'm doing what I have to do. It doesn't make any sense. Well, not to you. You're not here. You don't know what I know. Then tell me. I can't. You're right. I don't know what you know. I only know what I know. But isn't it possible that I have a little more objectivity than you? I doubt it. Darling, you are right in the middle of this. You're acting out of fear. Now I can understand that, but you've got to see. The only way to protect Alan Michael now is to put whoever has got you so scared behind bars. That won't stop him. You don't get it, do you? If you don't talk to someone, they're going to throw you into jail. Is that what you want? If that's what I have to do, then that's what I have to do. And then whoever is terrorizing you is going to run free? Does this make any sense at all? Maybe not, but if that's what has to happen, then... Oh, I think your father must be right. Daddy's always right. You don't know what it means to love. I'm doing this for Alan Michael. Oh, you are so full of it. You are doing this to protect yourself. You're so afraid of losing Alan Michael that you'll say anything to hang on to him. And that is not love. That is selfishness. You only want Alan Michael on your terms. You want him to see some sort of image of you that isn't you. I want him to love me. I want someone to love me. I love you. Who's lying now? You don't make it easy, but I do love you. I love you even though I know you're not telling the truth. Maybe Alan Michael will. Well, maybe that's what I'm afraid to find out. Love alive is the truth. It's when two people love each other enough to tell the truth. Take it from me. I, uh... I've lost Ross. No. Yes. I lied to him and I've, I've lost him. I'm sorry. is like Alan Michael. The truth means everything to him. Don't make the same mistake, Blake. If I tell Alan Michael the truth, then he'll know I lied and he won't love me. If you don't tell him the truth, it might not work out so well either. Then I don't win. You win if you tell you win yourself, and maybe, just maybe, you'll win Alan Michael's respect. I mean, it's possible. It's a chance you have to take. Do you love Alan Michael enough to risk losing him? I need sailing for irrigation, please. All right, right away. I'll lighten him up a little bit for you. Can't you feel the boot yet? Not yet. But I'm close. Very close. I know it. Well, he has lost a lot of blood. I'm not stopping now. Where are his vitals? His pulse and pressure, no change. He's steady as a rock. Mm -hmm. He certainly is determined. I'll give him that. I just hope it doesn't endanger the patient's life. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, well, I hope so. He's proved it before. He'll do it again. Man, oh man, 
good. Stop that. What is taking so long? I can't believe this. Can you believe this? Which part? Any of it. All of it. No. You know, I've gotten pretty mad at Alan Michael sometimes, but I never considered shooting him. You, you are awful. <laughs> oh, maybe once. There was that one time. Take it back. <laughs> I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't know. I was just trying to release some energy. <laughs> I'm so glad we don't have to go through this alone. Me too. Me three. <laughs> It's tough going through things alone. Especially you don't have to. Like Pigeon Key. Remember Sammy? It's all vague. I remember. Everybody pitched in. Justin and Billy, everybody was there for us. It was amazing. You really learn who your friends are. Seems like every time I opened my eyes, you were there. I was. I guess you can't really stop things from happening to people. You can just be there to help them get through it. I guess. Coffee. Coffee. Oh, Sam. Dylan. Thanks. And there's <sighs> milk and sugar in here. And Harley, I brought one for you anyway. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And anybody want some donuts? Donuts, yes. Thanks. Good. Any news? Uh, nothing. How's the Goroth doing? Oh, fine. He's fine. How's Alexandra? I don't know. I mean, her husband's daughter just shot her nephew. Unbelievable. Mm. Poor Alexandra. Poor whole family. They've really been ripped apart. At least she doesn't have to go through it alone. True. Wow. Oh, hey, Daddy, is it over? No, I told you it's a very delicate, time-consuming procedure. Well, the good news is that it's Daniel in there with Helen Michael. If anyone can pull him through, it's Daniel. Right, Daddy? Yes, ma'am. It's still in surgery. It doesn't look good. Mm, gee whiz, that's just too bad. You want me to wait around for the outcome? Why bother? Once we deal with Blake, the kid's a dead man. No, you just proceed as planned. Thirty years. I'll go see if Wanda doesn't have some paperwork for me. And I got some plane reservations to make. Oh, good. Yeah, baby. Everyone's mm. here. I've got an announcement to make. Oh, yeah? Well, what, are you getting married? Even better, Daddy. I'm resigning from Lewis Oil, effective today. What? Today? Darling, why? Daddy, we went over this a few weeks ago. I told you I'm going out on my own into clothing design. Darling, I, that's crazy. I mean, you, you don't know anything about the rag business. Don't start, Daddy. You've made your feelings very clear. You even refused to back me. Well, guess what? I don't care. Not everybody has such a dim view of my possibilities. Mm. Are you guys trying to talk some sense into her? Well, I think it's a wonderful idea. Well, thanks, Daddy. That's just what I well, wanted to hear. Son, I was somewhat a wildcatter myself. In my younger days, that's how I made the family fortune. Getting out on my own. I think we ought to give the gal a chance. Oh, thank you, Granddaddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to miss you. This company is certainly going to miss you, but I understand if you want to start things fresh. I wish you all the luck in the world. Mm. Thank you, Uncle Josh. That means a lot to me. Give me one second. Well, it's all well good, but this doesn't have anything to do with our little misunderstanding. No, Daddy. This one's all for me. There. There. I can feel it. I'm almost.
almost have it. All right, all right, all right. Take it easy, easy now, easy, easy, easy. easy. That was very nicely done. Uh, time will tell. Nice work, Doctor. Any word? Nothing. Roger. It's going to be okay. Thank you. Daddy, hmm. go in the operating room and find out what's happening. <laughs> That's all Daniel needs is having me hovering over him. You, know, you have to trust him, sweetheart. I do. You just have to have patience. Patience. Yeah, patience. Not one of my strong suits. I can't believe I'm this upset about a guy I once thought was just a spoiled rich kid. Uh, we've come a long way, haven't we? Too far sometimes, if you ask me. No word yet. Did you mean what you said upstairs? I don't want any more lies. I learned that the hard way. Well, don't give up on her. She listens to you. You might be able to convince her to tell the truth. She hasn't been listening to me lately. We have to save her. Mostly from herself. I wonder if that's possible anymore. They got the bullet. He's out of the woods. Go tell Blake. We have Dr. St. John to thank for this. I knew you could do it. Thank you. Thank you for saving him. You are so wonderful. What am I doing here? I have to get out of here. Where are you going? I am going to see a man about my heart. Huh? I'm taking your advice. Come on, mates. I've got a surprise for you. What's the surprise? I'll show you. Whoa. Uh, I'm going to go do some work. Alan Michael's okay. Whoops. I'm sorry. Am I busting something up? No. No, not at all. Alan Michael is all right? He, they got the bullet. Oh, thank goodness. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yeah, well, you guys look really busy, so... No, no, we're not busy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 we're very busy. Billy's got to telephone uh, Salt Lake City and apologize, and I've got some plane reservations to make. <laughs> and uh, Mindy just quit. She's uh, got to clean out her desk. What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, come on, let's get a move on, everybody. Time's a-wasting. Time is money. And take it easy on that uh, herbal tea stuff, son. Too much ain't good for you. Hi. Hi. There's something I that something I wanted to... to... <laughs> sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, you no. go first. <laughs> Ladies first. Josh, um, it's not easy for me to say this. Okay. I'll tell you what, why don't I go first then? Okay, great. I'm sending you on a little vacation. Excuse me? Well, you said you needed a vacation, and I think this is a good time after everything that's happened. You're sending me away. Yeah. There's this great ski resort in Canada. It's in Alberta. It's, it's, it's called... You, you ski, right? Oh! <laughs> Doesn't it everybody on Fifth Street? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure you'll look great in one of those outfits. 
Yeah. So what were you going to tell me? Oh. Oh, nothing. Nothing important. This is really nice of you. from now on. I promise. I'll be good from now on. If you just let Alan and Michael live. Your prayers have been answered. Alan and Michael will be all right. Oh, my. <laughs> Did you mean what you just said? Yeah. And start by telling the truth. You've been given the chance, honey. Take it. It's your last chance, Chrissy. All right. <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> my daughter is ready to make a statement. Great. I'll call a stenographer. Good. And I am going to call Clarence. Okay. I am so proud of you. <laughs> By tomorrow, this will all be over. This is New York. More later on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Him you love him and he wants to send you away. He wants you away so badly he's sending you across the border. Oh. And you wondered what else could go wrong. Well, now you know. Oh, Granddaddy, I can't believe I actually did it. That sounds exciting. <laughs> Are you going to design for men as well? Well, I'm not going to do anything if I don't rent some space and get an assistant. <laughs> I don't think I can do all this on my own. Mm -hmm. Well, Harley, what are you doing out here? Oh, I was just catching my breath. Did you uh, talk to Joshua? Mm-hmm. Then uh, here's your plane ticket. I went down and got it from the travel agent myself. Thanks, H.B. You enjoy the trip, darling. And Mindy, 
Don't forget, I am long in the inseam. Yes, hello, this is Melinda Sue Lewis. I'm calling about the space you have for rent. 11.30. Perfect. See you then. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. Well, where are you going? What? Your plane ticket. Oh, <laughs> yes, yeah, this. Josh is... Sending me on a vacation to Banff. Wow, that's really nice of him. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's the kind of boss I'm going to be. Generous, thoughtful. Oh, he's generous. Hmm. Well, uh, excuse me, I've got some more calls to make. He's so thoughtful, he's sending me out of the country. Alan Michael will be proud of you. Here's hoping. Oh, you're up. That's good. You must be feeling better. Would you like to go for a walk? Oh, she can't now. She's going to talk to the police. Ah. Oh. Hey, take uh, Mrs. Spaulding down to headquarters for questioning. Yeah, but I called the sonographer. Not. Nah, they wanted to come down. All right. Uh, they want you to go down to headquarters to make your statement. Okay. Now, wait a minute. She can't just walk out of here. She has to be released. Yeah, some of these folks right here. Oh, that's good for you. I'll take over from here. Great. It's been a long night, huh? Now, yeah, if you could just sign right here. Do you want me to go down with you? No, if you could just stay with Alan Michael. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. I love you. Give Alan Michael my love. I will. Well, this all seems to be in order. Uh after you. Homemade bread. For the bake sale. Be great with country crock. Hey. All that rich buttery taste. Let's take country crock with... Well, you're in a good mood. I don't have to ask why. You were right, Daddy. You were absolutely right. You know, you can never stop loving someone. I, I will always love Reva. That's not going to change. But that doesn't mean I can't go on. You know, I want to I wanna live again. I want to be with Harley. And... <laughs> oh, son. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yes, great. Okay, perfect. 12.30, uh-huh. Great. Okay, see you then. Thanks. Oh, so much work. I think I need a vacation already. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. I've, I've got to place an ad for an assistant. That's such a big step. You know, going out on your own. Yep. <laughs> it's pretty brave. It's necessary. How do you know when it's the right time? You just know. You don't have a choice. They figured it'd be safer here. Have a seat. Shouldn't my lawyer be here? Up to you. Uh, I'm not going to try and lead your statement one way or another. You don't like the way it types out. Don't sign it. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm going to go get the tape recorder. You want anything? Uh, coffee? Bottled water and a very long tape. I have a lot to say. Okay. <laughs>
just bet you have a lot to say, sweetheart. This has been Guiding Light. with us tomorrow for another full hour of Guiding Life. school with lots of team spirit after this. It's all too easy for teenagers in big schools to feel lost and give up on education. At Thomas Jefferson Middle School in Louisville, Kentucky, teamwork is one solution. The 1,400 students there are divided into nine groups called families. Each one is led by a team of teachers who really get to know their students. Families help with school and social problems and perhaps most important, by encouraging students to do their best. I'm Charles Carroll, CBS News, for Schools In. This is CBS.